Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. This begins a weekly series we're calling The Porter Report. Gareth Porter, investigative journalist and historian and regular contributor to The Real News Network, is going to join us most weeks and give us his take on what the big story is. And to kick things off, he joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thanks very much, Paul. So what have you been looking at this week? Well, this week, the story uh, for me was all about the bombing of a tourist bus in Burgos, Bulgaria, by parties unknown, and the immediate uh, political response from Israel and the United States, which was, of course, to blame uh, the, the Iranians and Hezbollah, uh, the United States uh, doing so through an unnamed senior official uh, talking to the New York Times, uh, an official who I happen to think was uh, almost certainly uh, General David Petraeus, the head, now the head of the CIA, who is pretty well known for an animus toward Iran that goes beyond uh, the usual, even Washington, animus toward Iran. Uh, but, but I think the story here, uh, there are a couple of storylines that I've been following. One, of course, is that the Israelis realized that they're uh, reaping a lot of benefit from what they have been working on for months now, which is a narrative uh, that Iran is spreading terror throughout the world. Uh, they call it uh, terrorism on five continents. That is, the Israelis say uh, that the Iranians are carrying out, have carried out terrorist activities uh, in 20 or 24 countries, depending on who's talking, uh, on five continents. And uh, they talk about, uh, of course, the, uh, the bombs that went off in New Delhi and in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. They talk about the arrests of Hezbollah, uh, alleged Hezbollah operatives in Bangkok and in Cyprus uh, and elsewhere uh, in the world uh, over the last few months. And all this adds up to a propaganda bonanza for the Israelis. And they figured that uh, the Burgos bombing could be parlayed into uh, a major political triumph, which they've been trying to accomplish for some time, which is to get the European Union to add the Hezbollah organization to its list of terrorist organizations. Okay, now, before we, go, before we go there, let me just ask you a question. Um, has, has, has Israel suggested what Iran would stand to gain from all this terrorism? Well, I, I don't think that there's any analysis that goes that far <laughs> uh, from the Israelis or from the Americans, for that matter. It's simply assumed in the propaganda output of the Israelis as, as well as of the Americans that the Iranians are, uh, of course, uh, trying to get uh, revenge for the uh, uh, killing of Iranian scientists. That's the primary, uh, the primary propaganda line. Uh, now, of course, uh, the Iranians have said that, uh, that they would retaliate, but they certainly didn't say that they would retaliate against Israeli civilian tourists. And uh, specifically, Hezbollah has not only denied, but derided the idea that they would uh, actually fight against uh, Israeli tourists as a way of taking revenge against Israel. Right, and uh, it should be pointed out, this, for people that haven't followed the story, this bombing in Bulgaria took place on July 18th. Five people were killed, four Israeli tourists, one Bulgarian bus driver, and about 20 people were injured. So what is, I mean, has Israel offered any evidence that Iran or Hezbollah is responsible for this? So far, no evidence uh, from Prime Minister Netanyahu, who, who of course went on uh, American uh, Sunday television shows, uh, Fox News Sunday and uh, C uh, CBS, uh, face the nation and made very strong arguments to the effect that uh, that he had uh, absolute uh, ironclad intelligence uh, to the effect that it was in fact Hezbollah behind the Burgos bombing. Um, and in fact, I, I think we can say from the circumstantial evidence that uh, the, Iran the Israelis did not hand over any smoking gun evidence to the U.S. government because uh, the uh, spokesman for the White House over the weekend was saying, no, we are not in position yet uh, to identify who was responsible for the bombing in Bulgaria. And uh, so, so far, so it's just we're supposed to take Netanyahu's uh, uh, assertion 
Uh, now, well, it's, it's Netanyahu's assertion against the background, I must say, of a very successful propaganda uh, campaign based on this whole series of alleged incidents which have taken place or were alleged to have taken place in various now, what is what, what evidence? What evidence is there of that that Iran's has anything to do with any of these bombings? Well, I mean, the problem is this: that uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. In the cases of Cyprus, which has been most prominently cited recently because it happened a week before the bombing in Bulgaria, uh, a Hezbollah, uh, a person who was alleged to have been a Hezbollah operative, was arrested uh, in Cyprus on charges of uh, violating terrorist laws, at least that's what was originally stated. Um, and uh, the Israelis managed to put out stories through their own press and influencing the local press in Cyprus uh, to put out various lurid stories saying that uh, this so-called Hezbollah operative was planning a kind of major terrorist attack uh, along the, the lines of Mumbai and so forth. Um, in fact, uh, what we now find out is that the Cypriot government uh, has not uh, concluded that at all. In fact, uh, a senior official of the uh, government of Cyprus was quoted as saying that it's not clear whether there was a target in Cyprus at all in this case. Uh, so basically, I think the, the, the case in Cyprus uh, is suggestive of a whole series of cases in which there are lurid stories about plans that uh, the, a person who's been detained or arrested uh, was going to carry out uh, a major terrorist attack but in fact, if you drill down to what is actually known, uh, no such information has really come to light whatsoever. And so um, I think what we're looking at here is a lot of manipulation politically by the Israelis, uh, essentially telling the host government in Cyprus, in Bangkok, uh, in uh, uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, Kenya, and elsewhere, that uh, they have information that somebody, either an Iranian or a Lebanese, uh, is planning a major terrorist attack and they'd better arrest this person right away. Um, and I think that's, that's really the, the uh, truth of the matter. So this is all part of the same chorus of rhetoric, in your opinion at least, of, of, for strengthening sanctions, preparing conditions for some kind of attack. I think it's part of the Israeli political strategy for uh, both strengthening sanctions, uh, pushing the U.S. political the system further to the right, uh, positioning themselves to be able to manipulate the Obama administration more effectively during the presidential campaign with the hope perhaps of uh, luring the United States into a direct conflict with Iran. I think that, that is in the back of the minds of uh, Netanyahu and his advisors. And isor isolating Iran in terms of uh, support for stronger sanctions and things like this. Yes, and of course, the, uh, the effort to get Hezbollah listed as a terrorist organization is just one of the many things that they hope to reap the benefit from in terms of this uh, propaganda campaign. Now, Iran answered these charges by saying that they thought Israel could be behind these bombings, and they suggest uh, the motive being to pin it on Iran as Israel conducts it. Uh, uh, there's no evidence of that either, is there? At this point, no evidence whatsoever, and in fact, um, I have to say that I find uh, the idea that Mossad, even though we know that it carries out false flag operations and false flag attacks, that, that Mossad would consciously carry out an operation that would kill Israeli tourists is something that I have a hard time believing, just as I uh, have a hard time believing that there could be a, an inside job on 9-11, because too many people would have to know about it. Um, and uh, somebody would blab about it, and it's just impossible to keep that secret. Yeah, and it is, that would be rather explosive in Israel if that did ever come out. Yes. Uh, although we do know that at the time of the, f of the formation of the State of Israel, there were some attacks somewhat, uh, there, were, there was well, such No events. question about it, and, and, and I've made the argument that the, uh, the bombing of the car in which an Israeli, the wife of an Israeli diplomat, um, was uh, was in the car at the time in New Delhi in February, uh, you know, looked very much like it could have been a false flag attack because it was done so carefully uh, in a way that uh, would not harm 
seriously uh, any occupant of the car. The, the bomb was a very small, extremely small bomb, uh, which by itself was not going to uh, uh, cause any harm to a passenger. Um, the placement of the bomb, uh, the, the contents of the bomb, uh, the timer on the bomb, all were done in such a way as to essentially uh, make it possible to have a bombing without anybody being hurt. And so it was, to me, plausible, it was quite plausible that the Israelis could have planted that bomb uh, in a way that would implicate Iran, make it look like an Iranian operation, and of course uh, make it much easier to put pressure on India to cut off all oil imports from Iran, which mm. is exactly what has happened. But we don't have, we don't have, not all oil oil imports, but at least some oil imports. Right. So one can analyze intent and possible motive, but at the moment on any of these scores, there's no evidence we know about. Is that right? I I think there is no case here that is clear cut uh, where there's objective evidence that the Iranians have in fact carried out a terrorist attack during this period in which the uh, Israelis have made these claims about 20 or 24 terrorist attacks on, on five continents. All right. All right, thanks very much for Gareth. And Gareth's going to be coming back weekly with the Porter Report. And if you would like to see more of all of this, there's a donate button over here, because if you don't click that, we can't do more of this. Thanks for joining us on The Real News Network.